Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate closed loop simulation of flyback converter in MATLAB. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it, only then you'll get the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. This is the MATLAB model of flyback converter in closed loop operation. So, we have already done open loop simulation of flyback converter with design. So, in case you haven't watched that video, please do watch it. That will give you a greater insight of how to design it and simulate with respect to open loop. The video will be available in the description as well as in the end screen uh, so however we will be starting off from the scratch uh, in order to simulate a closed loop simulation model for a flyback converter in MATLAB all right let's go to MATLAB and get started uh, so here we are in MATLAB click on simulink library browser at the first place we'll be searching for a power cube block uh, we can search the components that we want over here and we will be requiring a power cube block which is uh, basically used for the simulation to run uh, so if you don't have power cube what happens is that it will throw you an error so we will require that and we need a voltage measurement block so once both of them are added uh, we will be uh, requiring a DC voltage source uh, which is basically the supply for our particular circuit and uh, choose the ones that are there in black for power electronic applications and uh, once that is done uh, we will be requiring MOSFET which is used as a switch we are not using thyristor because it requires an external commutation circuit to turn it off we can also use an IGBT it depends upon your requirement and uh, once that is done uh, we will be requiring a series RLC branch uh, so search for series RLC and you will be getting it uh, over here add that block as well and uh, once that is uh, added uh, we will be requiring a scope in order to see the waveform at the output terminals so search for scope and uh, add that block as well once uh, this is also added we will be requiring a transformer linear transformer so you can search for transformer you will get all the varieties of transformer however we have to select a linear transformer according to our requirement so linear transformer add this block and once this is done uh, we will be uh, searching for a diode and diode will be available available right at the bottom choose the ones that is there in black and add that block as well so with respect to open loop we have already placed the components that we want let's start off with our closed loop uh, requirements so we need a constant block which is basically used as the reference or the feedback path so uh, we will be adding constant block and once uh, this is done uh, we will be requiring a controller so search for controller and uh, we'll be using a PID controller uh, which is basically in S yes domain so we will be adding that block which is uh, right at the top and once this is added we will be requiring uh, a subtract block so search by some you will get all the other types of block that are related to it so we will be adding subtract block uh, to our model and uh, we, uh, once this is added we will be using an absolute block uh, in order to get the absolute value of the signal from the output of the PID controller so search for ABS and add that block as well once this is done uh, we will be requiring a repeating sequence uh, which is basically compared with the absolute value of the output signal that is obtained and which is in turn given to uh, the uh, greater than or equal to operator basically the relational operator in a circuit so uh, search for relational operator and uh, choose greater than or equal to and uh, once this is done this will be given as a pulse to the uh, switch that we are using so we have placed all the components uh, according to our requirement we will be uh, arranging them in appropriate positions so that we can get started off with our circuit connection once they are placed in their respective positions we will first start off with rotating this by using control R option and uh, disable the measurement port with respect to both the switches that are there that is diode as well as MOSFET so once that is disabled we will be connecting it in this particular fashion uh, the transformer primary end will be connected to uh, the DC source and uh, we will scroll this a little down and we will be connecting in this particular fashion according to a circuit in case you have reverse uh, I mean you have connected this in the opposite path like the source is in the upward direction you will never get the output so be very careful while uh, arranging the MOSFET according to a circuit and uh, once that is done uh, we will be entering our supply voltage uh, our supply is chosen to be uh, equal to 24 volt according to our design so click on OK and uh, once that is done we will be double clicking on the transformer we will be changing few parameters let the uh, be in SI unit and over here uh, we will be uh, choosing its value to be equal to 40 into 10 power 3 so enter uh, into 10 power 3 and change this value to be equal to 40 so once this is done our uh, switching frequency is 100 kilohertz so change 
change that value to 100 into 10 power 3 and uh, we will be changing uh, these values uh, will be making it equal to 0 because uh, we don't want uh, additional resistances or, uh, or inductances across the primary winding which will in turn increase the losses so copy paste this uh, and we will be changing only with respect to the secondary voltage that is 40 volt that is uh, what is necessary according to our uh, connections so disable three winding transformer we don't use that uh, with respect to our requirement so once that is done you will be getting it in this particular fashion so now our next step is uh, we will be rotating uh, this and uh, we will be uh, changing it to be a capacitor and its value is chosen to be equal to 17.85 micro so 17. Point uh, 85 is the value that we have to enter enter that value and click on ok and once that is done we will also require another resistor at the load so we are using a resistive load so we will basically control C and control V and uh, you will double click on it and change the type of parameter that you want the value of resistance is chosen to be equal to 40 ohms according to the design so now we will be connecting the diode in this particular fashion so over here um, and we'll be connecting the resistor in this particular fashion and we'll enclose the circuit according to our circuit diagram once that is done the output voltage will be taken from this point uh, with respect to the load resistor and it will be given to the scope so we'll be connecting the scope uh, the output voltage is what we're going to see and uh, the positive value is given here we need a voltage of 40 volt at the output terminal so enter the value of output voltage that you want over here and that will be compared with respect to the actual output voltage that is obtained and it will be given to the PID controller so in this particular fashion so rotate this uh, and give it to the PID controller double click on this and uh, we will be entering the parameters it totally depends on your design so we can use transfer function approach in order to design this I'll be using only an integral controller just to improve certain aspect of the output waveform uh, that I need so I'll be changing it to be equal to 7 and rest of the others will be made equal to 0 so uh, I'll click on ok and once this is done I'll give it to the absolute value I'll obtain the absolute value of the signal from the PID controller and I'll give it to greater than or equal to operation so it is just like pulse width modulation technique where we use this block where we used sawtooth waveform instead of repeating sequence and the output is compared with this and then given to the pulses so just like that uh, but not exactly that one so it's quite similar to it uh, and uh, once that is done uh, I'll be changing this to be equal to the switching frequency according to our uh, but over here I'm not entering a huge amount of uh, switching frequency if you enter uh, there are deviations with respect to the output that we want so we'll be entering it according to uh, so switching frequency it, it does affect the circuit uh, in a huge way so I'll be entering these values and once this is done I'll be giving this to the gate terminals so one important observation here so if you simulate this uh, you will definitely not get the exact output uh, because according to the dot convention with respect to open loop it's still fine but with respect to closed loop it should follow our dot convention so what I'm trying to say primary dot should be here secondary should be here isn't it so in MATLAB there isn't uh, there is not a feature with respect to black components there is another one that is there in blue and that gives you the dot conventions and all you can simulate using that as well but uh, just to give you the dot convention in that particular fashion connect it in reverse polarity in this particular fashion so this will account for the dot convention that we want so now we have given it an opposite uh, way that clearly indicates that the the secondary terminal is having an opposite dot convention with respect to the primary one so dot convention plays a very important role here so most of the students will make a mistake here while connecting the circuit once you are clearly aware with respect to this concept I can I think we can get started with our simulation now so we are supposed to get a voltage of about 40 volt set the simulation time to be equal to uh, one second we don't uh, require huge amount of simulation time because the load that is used is a static load in our so now let us double click on the scope in order to see the waveform and if you see the output voltage is zero so we're not getting the exact waveform I intentionally made this mistake uh, so I just wanted to tell you one portion with respect to a linear transformer it should be converted to PU uh, in per unit system and uh, 
and if you observe the magnetization resistance and inductance is very high of the power of 10 power 11 so what is happening is that the effect of all the the effect of switching frequency uh, is uh, playing a very important part with respect to switching the uh, devices at the primary side uh, the effect of magnetization resistance and inductance is very high and that's the reason why it is causing impact with respect to our output so change this to 500 500 respectively uh, some small value and then now we'll click on run let's see if we are getting 40 now so uh, it does take some time to simulate so be a little patient with respect to it uh, so now if we get the output voltage to be equal to 40 then we are in the right direction towards simulating this so let's double click on the scope so over here yeah so we are getting uh, the exact waveform that we want so we can zoom in the waveform by using this particular feature so if you carefully observe there is a lot of ripples over here in this particular portion so uh, we will zoom this particular region and see uh, however the average value will be equal to 40 volt although there is uh, a deviation uh, these are ripples so this can be reduced by using suitable value of capacitor at the uh, load so based on that you can reduce this but average value will be 40 if you if you take the mean value over here so we are getting the output voltage that we are supposed to get uh, so now how do we justify this is a closed loop system for example let us say we are uh, changing the supply voltage to say equal to 15 volt so if input is changed in open loop the output also will change but in this case we are still supposed to get 40 volt and if we are getting 40 volt then we are in the right direction of simulating this and this is how we will justify that it operates in closed loop and that's the reason why we tend to go towards closed loop uh, the affinity of closed loop is more in comparison with open loop systems because it provides much more stability and it adjusts its output according to the changes in the input terminals as well so now if you double click I'll uh, restore its view and if you see it's still 40 volt the ripple is slightly high but you're still getting 40 volt uh, by suitably changing the values of capacitor you can further reduce this one so this is how we will be simulating a flyback converter in closed loop mode in case you have any questions feel free to reach out uh, thanks for watching this video if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video